Hello, and welcome back to Let's Play Underrail Expedition with me, Bring It Dawn. So it actually turns out the oddity that I forgot to read, or missed, was the uh, the Golden Disc. Though I don't remember having read this one before, so I think that one was also new. Yeah, the Golden Disc. Uh, some type of data disc painted gold. It's clearly just for show. I said this item gained two points of experience. Alright, let's go talk to Professor Oldfield. You here, Brondon. Good, good. Uh, Seeger just sent me the files. I hope I'm finally going to learn a bit more about what's happening here. Certainly. That's why I've asked that you come to my tent. I wanted to explain to you what this whole expedition is about, what its purpose is, as well as the details of your first mission. For after all, unless you have sufficient wider knowledge on the subject of our interest here, one cannot expect you to perform optimally, can he? Uh, I'm all ears. Excellent. Some three to three and a half centuries ago, this whole sea, this whole enormous cavern was chosen as the location of a major NFT project, the abbreviation standing for New Frontier Technologies, a super corporation that can be said to have been comparable to Biocore in power and influence, to Biocore and the other four super corporations to be exact. Other four? Security Agency, Bionic Institute, Nucleus Corporation, Transcendix. Alongside Biocore and NFT, they were the T6, the six, the six super corporations of pre-descent times. The old world, if you prefer. NFT is the one we will focus on. New Frontier Technologies is, or was, I should be more accurate, a super corporation primarily dedicated to discovering, exploring, and populating new environments, worlds mankind could only dream of making their homes. They developed technologies that would allow them to adapt these environments to the needs of mankind, but also do it in such a fashion as to preserve it, as much as possible, or in case of barren, desolate places, to breathe new life into them and turn them into something greater. They were explorers, visionaries, futurists, and often follows utopists. We do not, or might not ever know, where they had expanded following the descent, and whether they have met any success, but the one place they've settled in what we know of is right here, under the surface, in this sea, where sadly, their success no longer resides. Uh, what was this place called? It must have had a name in NFT's time. We don't know, unfortunately. No records exist that could tell us that. The name we academics use is the Black Sea Project, but that is just how we is just how we've designated it. We hope that will soon change. Well, that will change soon, though, after we have learned more about this place and what happened here. Now, you mentioned something about Biocore military. Are they responsible for all of this? Yes, it has been known for years with great certainty that it was Biocore's navy that had demolished NFT's facilities and killed, for all we know, the entire population. It was a holocaust. This very island was the very first and last stand NFT had made before their, de their demise. The exact reasons for this brutal, merciless act are still under debate, but the best substantiated and thus most popular hypothesis is that Biocore had seen NFT as competition and sought to eliminate them. Some scholars say that they had been in conflict even before the descent, but then again, there is also strong evidence suggesting the exact opposite. He shrugs. What is a fact is that Biocore was the one who initiated the attack on NFT after discovering their facilities here. That much we know from the Central Archive records. But more, but more on these some other time. Let us remain focused, or we could go on forever on this subject. He takes a sip of water from a plastic cup that had been on his desk since he came in. Speaking of sips of water... Alright, so far we've established that what NFT was, what their vision was, and that the Black Sea is one of their locations, if not the only, where they attempted to realize it. What follows is their demise at the hands of Biocore military might, after which things become rather dark, unclear. Our mission here is to unearth history, to piece together the events that led to NFT inhabiting this place following the descent, to learn what happened during their reign and what their technological achievements were, what they discovered. Not only that, but also what happened in subsequent years, after they had ceased to be. Biocore slowly abandoned the Black Sea after making sure their enemies would not rise again, but we don't know why. They never exploited any of the NFT achievements here, nor expanded into the area themselves. Why? This place has been shunned ever since, and there has to be a reason. There are many questions that await answers, and we hope the expedition will bring us just that. Answers. Your ultimate mission, Brondon, 
No matter the recovery or escort job you might have been set on, it's to bring us history, technology, art. Have you seen the enthralling sculptures that st still guard their long dead creators? The lighthouses, proud and beautiful, guiding even those who they were not built to guide. Oh, that was a comma there. Alright, they produce so much, and it would be a shame not to preserve such marvels. And their technology, born out of the super steel will to tame the untamable. Their technology could illuminate this dark world for us like we've never imagined. He drank some more water. Goodness me. Even despite the dangers, right now I personally wouldn't be any I personally wouldn't be anywhere else but here. And yeah, frankly, Professor, I can't wait to get started. You got me all hyped up now. Excellent. That kind of spirit is precisely what we need. Now with that out of the way, let's proceed to your mission. Seeger has recently managed to recover data from one of the NPCs. He also shared with me the thing you were just going to say. Oh. Oh. I see. How much did he manage to tell you before I video called him? He told me that the NFT personnel were implanted with these microchips, and that they can be used to open the keep and the other facilities. He didn't tell me where to get one, though. Ah, good. As far as we know, all the personnel had been implanted in their right hand between the root of the thumb and the index finger, but the problem is that all of the bodies we found on the island either had missing or damaged limbs as a consequence of the battle in which they fell. Those that had an intact right hand had microchips that are sadly no longer in, func in a functional state. Finding bodies is a difficult task, since it seems that the largest battle occurred here, right on this island. Those who did not participate have remained locked in the facilities, most probably, in these facilities we cannot open. Most, I should say, uh, because there is one, the West Storage Depot. Hold on, Chief Briggs mentioned a whole recovery team going after this. Shouldn't we all be briefed? The Chief has been busy, so I am not aware if he has assembled the team yet. Regardless, everyone else has been briefed about the things we just discussed. I've told you my part. The rest is up to Chief Briggs. See him in his tent. I forwarded the data to Seeger. I forwarded the data Seeger sent me. He checks his computer. Yes. Yes, I did. There. That's all I had for you. Do you have any further questions? Yeah, I have a few more questions. Uh, what can you tell me about Seeger? Ah, Jeremy. Yes. Good fellow. One of the finest students at the Facility of Information Technologies, and the head of the university's IT center. And he's been an assistant of mine in that field for a few years now. Even though his appearance might not suggest it in the least. Well, he is rather casual. Casual, yes. But goodness me, he wasn't like that. He looked normal, by our standards at least. It all began with his recent... It all began with his recent move to Hexagon. Hexagon. Hexagon is the second largest city in North Underrail, second only to Dis, but once you step into it, it's as if you've stepped into another world. It's a tech hub, a haven for tech heads and tech criminals alike. But to me, it looks more like tech slums, with all the stores, augmentation shops, cyber centers, tech armories, all crammed together in this confined vertical space that is Hexagon. And Seeger naturally found this attractive. Indeed. There's some things you can only find in Hexagon. And that I can understand. But by the caverns, this recent virtual mixed reality, whatever it is, craze that spread among the Hexagon Hexagonians has captivated, magnetized Jeremy as well. I was seriously considering taking someone else to this expedition, fearing he'd show up with visible ocular implants or some other kind of augmentation done in some shoddy Hexagonian shop. You should have seen some of those people. Seeker's appearance is just a mild case of exposure to Hexagonian depravity. Depravity. But he is an expert at what he does, and I need him here. Uh, tell me about the super corporations. A security agency, Bionic Institute. Oh, we've already talked about that. Tell me about the other four super corporations. Alright. As far as it's known, in the years before the descent, the end of history, as some old records call it, there were six super corporations. Big so called multinational or transnational corporations or transnational, uh, all members of the T6 group. Their super corporations were, by the end, the most powerful political entities of the pre-descent world. They are Biocore, very well known to us all, New Frontier Technologies, Nucleus Corporation, Bionic Institute, Transcendix, and Security Agency. And what is the T6 group exactly? At some point in pre-descent history, 
This group was formed in order for the super corporations to collectively maintain, negotiate, and defend their interests primarily against nation cities, which were these political entities unified by wholly different factors than those of super corporations. And what are these nation states? Well, Brandon, in simple terms, a nation is an old concept wherein the political identity of a certain people matches their cultural identity. Take a group of people speaking the same language, sharing the same territory, origin, ethnicity, and mentality, and give them consciousness of their political identity. Imagine all South Underrailers united under the same banner, so to speak, and working toward the same goals, and being comprised of the same people who are very much alike. Currently, there is no unity, but each station has its own interests and its own way of life. Could there be... could there be nation stations? Goodness me, I... well, ha. Won't say it can't be done. But nation states were large communities spanning great territories. Stations are small, minuscule in comparison. The word nation simply implies something greater than that, at least to me. Of course, as with many things in life, how nations define themselves or other nations was often a matter of debate, disagreement, and violent conflicts. That is a whole different topic. Uh, did you personally choose Aegis Incorporated for this expedition? It wasn't my decision alone, Brandon. No. But they were my top choice as well. They are simply the best in the business of security contract contractors. Uh, plenty of experience in most of these sec troop. Plenty of experience in most of these sec troopers, protectorate veterans, as you may know. They were an obvious choice for this kind of mission. And Chief Briggs, did you know each other from before? Richard, I had met him a few times. There were lectures of mine, unimportant, but goodness me, uh, we didn't as much we didn't as much as strike up a conversation. Only when I needed to speak with him regarding his employment for the Black Sea Expedition did we really, how should I say, get acquainted. Over the course of these two weeks, dare I say it grew into a friendship. By the caverns, hope we all make it out alive. This whole expedition seems like an expensive endeavor. Did the University of Dis finance it? I'm afraid the expedition's finances do not concern you, Brondon, and they won't be discussed here. All you need to know is that you will be paid the amount you and Chief Briggs had agreed on, and you will be paid on time. Now please, I ask of you not to insist on this matter any further. Okay, well. Some sketchy payments. Can he... Alright, I'm not getting paid right now. I have no idea where Chief Briggs' tent is at. I'm gonna assume it's down there. Let's go see if we can talk to... Dr. Savage. Alright. The man, covered in blood of various shades of red, draws tranquility from a cigarette, which has almost been reduced to what appears to be its filter. A small red tube of that active filter written on it. The doc presses a button on the side of it to release and discard the cigarette's carcass right at the top of an ashtray graveyard. The tranquility was brief and clears with the smoke as he speaks to you in a low-spirited, coarse, baritone voice. There goes the last one, he sighs. He observes you briefly. We haven't met. I'm Dr. Bryn Savage. I don't, and don't, I don't even think about making any jokes, okay? Now tell me, how bad is it? It's quite savage. <laughs> he stares at you blankly. You injured or just wasting my time? Uh, they got me real good. I'm gonna take a look at it then. Let him treat your injuries. And it's for free. Alright, uh, let's see, I need some medicine that's barter. Oh wow, okay, he sells plenty of uh, supplies. I'm gonna grab all of those. Might as well grab everything, right? Go for broke. Oh yeah, I didn't read about my uh, new equipment. So the Aegis Sec Trooper Armor, a tactical vest worn by the Aegis Incorporated Sec Troopers, made from Tyrus Ultra High Molecular Weight polyethylene fibers. It is lighter than most other vests while at the same time offering improved protection. It's okay. Um, it doesn't compare to what I'm currently using. It also doesn't have a shield, so that's lame. And then the Sec Trooper helmet. A lightweight combat helmet made from the same stuff used by Aegis Incorporated Sec Troopers. The built-in respirator provides limited biohazard protection. Interesting. Okay. I see. Looks like you have a lot of work on your hands around here. I get to catch a break from time to time. He sighs. Our medical team is quite small, whereas the amount of people that need our assistance is getting increasingly larger. 
It's Curtis, the surgeon, a couple of sec medics, and myself. That's the medical team. Yeah, the battle was quite vicious. Indeed, he sighs. We haven't seen the last of these barbarians. Not by a long shot. Uh, what should I be worried about the most while I'm here? Death. <laughs> okay. He sighs. First and foremost, never drink untreated water. If you absolutely must, however, boil it first. The water is full of bacteria, parasites, even toxic chemicals. We use aqua cleans to treat the water, so it's as safe to drink as it possibly can. As it possibly Okay. Aqua clean. It's a, you know, it's a quality brand of water filtration units. They're good. Where was I? Next, if you're going out on a mission, make sure you stock up on, among other medical supplies, antidotes. Really stock up. A lot of the creatures here are highly venomous, especially the sea serpents. They're all over the sea. We've lost far too many men to these spawns of evil already, so do your best not to contribute to the body count. What else is there? You're a southerner, right? Yeah, I can tell it by the accent. Okay, now if, say, looking up at the ceiling makes you feel dizzy, if you, um, if you experience inexplicable anxiety, sweating, or even seizures or anything of the kind, come see me without delay. And what does this have to do with being a southerner? Because southerners suffer from this disorder the most, he sighs. Look, if you feel funny, talk to me, okay? I think I covered the basics. Mm-hmm. The rest is common sense. Yeah, tell me about this anxiety disorder that southerners seem to suffer the most. I've got to return to my patients. I don't have time to go into this. Not now. Huh. I wonder if it has to do with, um... Being in smaller areas, because the south under rail, it's mostly, like, claustrophobic tunnels and things like that. So maybe having all this, uh... This space disorients the, uh... Southerners. So I'm gonna go try and find Yehoda and talk to her before we talk to Chief Briggs. I wonder if she's probably back up in the tower. Alright. Cold air surrounds the roof. Yehoda stands still, gazing at the sea, her cloak flapping in the wind, which doesn't seem to bother her at all. She glances at you, but somewhat incompletely, as though allocating anything more than the edge of her peripheral vision to identify you is redundant. It's you. What is it? Oh, hey there. She nods, her eyes scanning the vast, gloomy sea. What can you see from here? Because I can't see anything. You got eyes as well. You've got better eyes than me. She nods. I need some info on the surrounding location, and what is and what has been going on around here. She inhales and exhales slowly, as her eyes are panning across the scenery. South. It's nothing but the jaws, as you locals call it, and that glowing monolith on the cliff. West, on that island, that's where the muties live. Not much activity there, gener uh, generally. East and southeast, pirate territory. Lots of lights, lots of jets patrolling around. Also, the whole eastern side of the Black Sea is basalt rock? Or basalt rock? I've seen that word a lot, but I've never had to pronounce it. But there's also a lot of that red vegetation there. North. Now that's the Frag and Savage Land. Uh, lots of activity there ever since we moved in. There's a few spots which are well illuminated. That must be where their villages are. Northeast. There's plenty of vegetation there. Some kind of frag and mist. Darn if I know what it is. Can't see much there, generally. She pauses. There's also this guy cruising around on a crane ferry. Old man, armed. Refused to cooperate. Could be a pirate, as I've seen him sail seen him sail into their port on numerous occasions. I've also seen him go north into savage territory. She falls silent for a moment. Gotta keep my eyes peeled at all times. It appears as though you can see a lot from here. 
but everything's a lot closer than you think. Gotta stay alert. Uh, oh yeah, so enemy t uh, what did I ask her? Enemy something. Anyway, pirates are savages. Pirates. Lots of pirate jet skis, jet ski patrols about. They could be up to something. And the natives? Uh, lots of activity ever there ever since we moved in. They're probably preparing for another attack. Alright, can you see the ferryman anywhere? No. He sailed north in a savage territory before I lost sight of him. But he should be in my scope again soon. He follows a fairly consistent route of visiting the Muti Island and the pirate base before going north again. You don't seem very pleased with me being around. Company is distraction. I don't like distraction. But you fight well, so you're worth something. Guess I can tolerate you. Alright, hey. I've got worth. Uh, tell me about yourself. She gives you a freezing glance before returning to her duty. Silence ensues. Alright, tell me about the monolith. Can't tell you much. Never seen anything like it before. It's a strange, glowing, angular structure. There's a human-shaped statue beside it. At first, at first I thought it was a pirate, but it never moved. It's got something in its hands, but I can't tell what it is because of the glow. That's all I got for you. It's a lot colder up here. Where's all the warm air rising from below? She nods. There's a cold air current coming down from that crevice up there. She points to a crevice in the cavern ceiling north of you. You can see some bats approaching it from the side and being carried off course some 10 meters south. And it's hitting just this fragging lighthouse. How good of a shot are you? Outstanding. She glances at you. Darn, you got dumb questions. Fraggin' dumb. Don't you have any surveillance and detection equipment you can use? Envy and or night vision and thermal cameras, auto turrets, per perimetral omni sensors, and other automatic detection systems. We brought it all. And why not install some of that up here? She scans the sea from east to west. The hell's gut is too busy a place. The automatics get confused, start false alarms. Cannot be entirely relied upon. Cameras, they require keen human eyes behind them. Mine are the keenest around here. All the optical equipment I'll never Yeah, all the optical equipment I'll ever need is this scope. She looks at it, then through it as she carries on with her duty. Alright, well, I'll leave you to your duty. Alright. Let's go talk to Chief Briggs. Brondon. Uh, Professor Oldfield sent me to see you, sir. You finished his task? Yes, sir. He also explained to me our mission here and introduced me to my first assignment before sending me here. Very good. Have you collected your gear for Marcus? Yes. Very good. Your assignment is to find a working microchip so that we can pass the authentication and authorization scan in order to enter the keep and other facilities. If the data seeker is recovered is correct, we have little reason to doubt it at this point. You might have noticed that there is no one else present with us. That's because you'll be doing this mission alone. May I ask why, sir? I will give you the reason in just a moment. The West Storage Depot is where we're likely to find one of these microchips, since it's the only facility that's currently accessible. However, during our original recon of the Black Sea, we've noticed several locations where engagements between NFT and Biocore forces have taken place. It could be bodies there with functional microchips, but we'll need to do a more thorough search of the areas. These locations are close to native territory, so I dispatched one heavily armed recovery team to investigate these locations as soon as I'm done with you. Meanwhile, West Storage Depot is located not too far from here. And while not free from free of danger, it's less likely to turn into a war zone. Therefore, we'll have several locations covered, with in which increases our chances of finding those mi these microchips. If we're able to do that quickly, and before the natives are able to reconsolidate their forces and attack us again, we'll be able to withdraw all our teams back to the camp in time for defense. Understood. What well, can you tell me about the West Storage Depot? It's currently home to a community of muties. We haven't tried making any contact with them so far. You'll be our first representative. Our jet ski patrols have approached the island a few times. While the muties did not respond with hostility, it doesn't mean that they won't to your presence. Especially not after this attack. 
We don't know anything of their relations with the natives. All of our observations so far have shown the area to be free of natives. To summarize, you are to sail west to B7, enter the NFT facility, and attempt to obtain a functional ARF, RF, ARFID microchip. <laughs> the muties are cooperative. Try to extract any useful information from them. How you choose to accomplish your assignment is up to you. This concludes your briefing. Sextripper Jenkins is back for patrol and is waiting for you at the docks to give you the keys to your jet ski. You'll need it to reach the island. Jet ski? I don't know if you call them... I don't know if you call them here differently, but I'm talking about a single-seat jet-propelled vessels. You see, you've seen them at the dock. But I don't know how to ride a jet ski. The ones we use are quite simple to operate. Jenkins will tell you all you need to know. That'll be all, Bronda. Uh, would you mind answering a couple of questions before I leave? Only if it is something important. Uh, what's this camp security status? We are currently 32 sec troopers defending the camp. Our firearm and ammunition supplies are very good. High tech equipment supplies, very good. Medical supplies, very good. Our jet ski numbers are very good. That is all. And what do you know about the ferryman? We consider him a minor threat. He was seen entering the pirate territory. While well, he's been doing nothing but sailing around and apparently scavenging materials from the water for the past two weeks, he could in fact be acting as a pirate spy and observing us. However, what worries me the most is the fact that he's also sailing through native waters, completely un uncontested. What kind of relationship he has with them is something we've not been able to determine yet, as he was uncooperative whenever he was approached. He's lightly armed and for the time being, best avoided. What can you tell me about the pirates? They are a high level threat, especially now after the native invasion. They are mostly concentrated on the southern bay and along the eastern coast, and have regular jet ski patrols along their perimeter and within the bay. They mostly employ light to heavy firearms and other low tech projectile weapons, but their fortifications also have larger caliber machine guns, especially at their main base. Did they oppose your arrival? Of course. There were a number of incidents when we first arrived, mostly between our and their jet patrols. They were aggressive, but we came prepared and have managed to repel all of their incursions into our territory. But we didn't come here to wage wars. It wasn't our original plan to have a permanent camp on this island, as we're in the open and could be observed and attacked from all sides. Not to mention it would exa exasperate rate the tensions with the pirates due to our proximity to their positions. We instead planned to move further north, unaware of the native presence there. Yeah, who are those natives anyway? I can offer you little information outside of what you've already seen for yourself. They control the entire northern region of the Black Sea. They employ primitive weapons and technology, but their great numerical advantage, familiarity with the terrain, and, rel and relentlessness has turned them into an obstacle we haven't been able to overcome. So no one outside the Black Sea knows anything about them. Nothing that would prepare us for what we encountered here. They were an unexpected threat which has, together with pirates, wildlife, disease, and our event environmental conditions forced us into this deadlock we're in. Man, so much dialogue. I'm starting to fall apart. And yet, we are still unable to understand the exact relations between natives and the pirates, although I find it highly doubtful that they formed any kind of alliance based on our observations. And what can you tell me about the recovery teams? There's currently only one active recovery team, Alpha. It's essentially a fire team comprised of five of my best sex troopers. I've yet to dispatch them, but just like you, their mission is a search for a microchip implant. They're on channel 6 on your navcom if you need to contact them. Okay, I think that's everything. Uh, so I can use this at any time, right? Alright, the Redinger, or Redinger. Uh, 450 NCDs rebranded BioCore Hermes 450 navigation and communication device. It offers a long range two way radio as well as receiver capable of acquiring data from the underrail positioning relay system, north underrail only. Are using advanced but less accurate integrated algorithms to determine the device's position in three dimensional space. Supports various map formats and programmable co coordinate systems, among many other features. Alright, uh, check stored coordinates. Okay, so this will tell me, I guess, things that I've discovered where they're at. Cool. Let's talk to the jet ski patrols. Uh, Sierra 5 speaking. Over. 
Report. Over. Recently encountered green serpents. Scared them off. Nothing else to report. Over. Camp security? What's in here? Over. What's your status? Over. Everything is in order. No hostiles in sight. Over. Recovery Team Alpha? This is... Recovery Team or RTA leader speaking. Over. Report. Over. We're on the move. Over. Oh. We've been ambushed by a giant hermit crab. Neutralize it before it could get close. This one was hiding in an NFT crate. Be on the lookout. Resuming mission. Over. <laughs> you hear a sigh. Just talk to me. Out. Professor Oldfield? I'd prefer it if we spoke in person. Oldfield out. Oh, I guess because we're on the... Uh... Oh, okay. So we can have her... Okay. So she'll tell us where the ferryman is, I guess, at all times. And I can manually select the frequency as well. Interesting. So I don't think I missed talking to any NPCs. So I talked to Yehoda, Briggs, Oldfield, Savage. I didn't go back and talk to Seeger, but I don't think that I need to. Let's go see if uh, Marcus and Ladleman have anything new to say before we head out. Then we'll go talk to Jenkins. Then maybe next episode we'll actually get into some uh, exploration. Actually, does he have... Not that. I need... Can you buy this from me? Because I'm not going to use that. Flashbangs. That's what I want. Alright, cool. I guess I can talk to Seeger, see if he has anything new to say, and then we'll then we'll head out. We're gonna head out eventually. That's a promise. Oh, here we go. Uh, tell me about Hexagon. Professor already told me a bit, but I Professor already told me a bit, but I'd like to hear more. Or what can you tell me about ARFID microchips? Okay. ARFID stands for Active Radio Frequency Identification. Basically, it means that the microchip has its own power source, as opposed to passive chips, which get powered by a reader. Data I've recovered, with a lot of effort, tells me that NFT used these chips originally for storing personal and medical history, to monitor the host's health status and to keep track of their location. I don't know how the microchip is being powered, by a battery or even by the host himself, but I bet they did a good job on it considering everyone's got them. So when did auth authorization come into the picture? The log mentions just that. It seems that the NFT didn't really have much need for authorization checks, okay? But they implemented this system to make it more difficult for Biocore to enter their facilities. Considering they never made it into the keep, it worked. I'll tell you about Hexagon. Professor already told me a bit, but I'd like to hear more. You know, man, maybe some other time. It's kind of a broad topic, and I've work to do. I've got work to do. Some more coffee? Alright, yeah. You turn me down. That's fine. I didn't really want any anyway, so. Alright, let's go talk to Jenkins and get our jet ski and get prepared for adventure in the next episode. Sex Trooper Brondon. I'm Sex Trooper Jenkins. Pleased to meet you. The chief sent me here to receive the keys to one of the jet skis. Have you ridden one before? No. Don't worry. While there are many different types of jet skis, the ones you'll be using it. The one you'll be using is fairly simple to operate. You put the keys in the ignition, start it, hold the bars with both hands, and press the levers behind them to accelerate. Most jet skis do not have brakes. You simply release the levers, and the force of the water will stop it fast. Jet skis are simple to operate, but it takes some time getting used to riding them. Also, don't make sudden turns until you gain some experience, okay? Now while technically you can use the variety of types of energy cells to charge a jet ski, it is best to use high capacity fusion cells. These have been specifically designed to be used with vehicles and large machinery. What else, what else? Mm. Yes, if your jet ski runs out of power, don't worry. Your backup generator will automatically kick in. 
It will allow your jet ski to move, but it's going to be very, very slow. You'll be using one of the two makeshift jet skis we acquired recently. Yours is the larger one. Do not let their appearance deceive you. They are mechanically in good condition. I'm assuming that one right there. But I thought I was going to get one of the good ones. They are far too valuable to be given to inexperienced personnel. For now, you'll be using the one I showed you. I understand. Can I get the keys now? Yes. Here you are. She hands you the jet ski key. Continue. Uh, if you need energy cells to recharge your jet ski, see Marcus. And remember, it's best to use high capacity fusion cells. For maintenance, repairs, and technical inquiry, talk to the ladleman. That's all the time I have. I need to return to my patrol duty soon. Good luck, Sec Trooper, and take care of your jet. Uh, good luck to you as well, Sec Trooper Jenkins. She nods and leaves. Well, unless I can take either one of these. Scrap jet or junk jet? Which one's better? Okay, there's a trunk. Interesting. I want to drive this guy. Give me the big boot. Alright, we're going to call it here. Uh, next episode, we will uh, hop on board the... I guess it's scrap jet because it's bigger. Actually, let me quick save. Can I grab the other one? That shouldn't count as stealing. Do my keys work for both? No. Alright, so only the big one. I can lockpick it. Alright. Thanks for watching. Hope to see you guys in the next episode.